Welcome to the lab. I'm Al. This is Marcus. We are welcoming our brothers, Gabe and Michael. <laughs> What's up, guys? What's, What's up, going yep. on, What's fellas? What's up, fellas? <laughs> What's up, brothers? Oh, man. Oh, man. Well, to hey, start. Thanks for joining us, guys. It's good gonna... to start with a good blast. Good to start with a good old blast. <laughs> Might as well get the last down now, guess. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that shit's about to get real. Shit is about and to get real. Oh my god! X. So yes, yo, I think that the, the four of us are cursed right now. <laughs> 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 There's always something going on, bro. <laughs> All right, it's out. It's gone. All um, right, so today we're gonna go on uh, and start off with today on TikTok. All right. So today on TikTok, we're gonna have this African gentleman. We're going to listen to what he says, and then, you know, we'll just uh, comment afterwards. All right. This video might not go anywhere, but I hope enough people will understand what the man is trying to say. What Leopold did, 20, 25 million people killed in Congo. Hands chopped off mm. and chocolate bars made in the form of hands. And the Belgians will be eating chocolates to celebrate the death of the Africans. When I get into the, into the atro atrocities of the... European and colonial system, particularly the slave trade and the Congo uh, uh, genocide, I actually get upset because you cannot have two million Jews who die in Germany and you coin up words anti-Semitism, anti-what, anti-what to protect the Jews and you look over your shoulder, you have more than 100 million blacks who have died and have been killed. And there's no one who has come up with the concept of anti-black and Jews are allowed to celebrate. And if you say anything against the Jews, then you are labeled as anti-Semitic. Mm. But can't black people do the same thing? We don't have control over the system that narrates this mm. story. Two million Jews die. Hitler is the most horrible man. Leopold kills 20 million mm. Africans. Mm -hmm. And he's still not the most worst man that ever lived. Can you process that? No. Hitler kills two million white people. He's the most evil man that ever lived. Leopold kills 20 million Africans. He still does not appear on the list of the most wicked people that ever lived on the earth. No. There must be something wrong with this narrative. Totally something wrong with that narrative. It can be right by day, by night, by numbers, by mathematics, by ethnography. It cannot be right that the whole world watches the massacre of black people and says nothing. I think there's disparity right there. Someone is not being honest about the authenticity of history and the dignity of human life. And if this is true, that 2 million Jews are much more important than 20 million Africans, then maybe we're on the wrong continent where value of human life must be equal. So yes. Now I think the, uh, the Holocaust was more than 2 million. Am I not correct? Yeah, from, from what we're taught, it was more than 2 million. It was 4 million. It was, um, it was anywhere between 4 to 5 million Jews and 6 to 7 million people that he's responsible died because of, but yes. It was more than 2 million. But yet what's funny is we learn about that in school, but I didn't find out about Leopold till what, maybe a decade ago? Uh, I, I didn't honest, know if I any, never I, even heard. I never heard I of did, him. I didn't know. I, I didn't know anything about Leopold till about a decade ago. Hmm. I didn't know anything about most of the black massacres in the United States of America till over a decade ago. Now, Jews, what happened to the Jews in Germany was a horror. But you see what he said, all the, all the phrases and terms that were coined up because of said massacre. You flip the script. Leopold goes into the Congo. It's, and in the Congo, he massacred at least close to 25 million. It was more than 20. It was closer to 25 million. And we don't hear a peep about this motherfucker. Not one thing? peep. If you Google it right now, they'll say estimates, but they'll 
roundabout say that he's responsible for 10 million, which is well under. Now, even with him being 10 million, you don't hear anything about him. Hmm. He, no. And again, he's not even on the list as the, the worst human. What? But you got Hitler up there. What time frame was this? Did this happen? Like where? Like, was it like the 1900s? 18, 18, 18. Um, okay, he lost control. How about this? He gotten so bad that the Europeans, some of the European powers at the time, stepped in and made him relinquish control. Because this wasn't, okay, what people are okay. He was, um, he's Leopold II. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people don't know is that he was like a king, right? Something like that. But instead of it being for his kingdom, he had everything that they were doing was going to his own personal finance. Mm. But he lost control at 1909. He lost control in 1909. So gotcha. it was like 28 years. So it was like 1850, 1809. Um, so that's 18, uh, what, 1885. To 1909, is he had the power over the Congo. Gotcha. But he had power in that area from like, like the 70s, 1870s. Gotcha. But 1885, he had complete dominance over that area, mm. and he would have it till 1909, when he was forced to relinquish it. Well, I mean, and, his, and it was a lot of us thought it was blood diamonds. Yeah, but it's not. It was rubber. Mm. It was ivory, and it was rubber. And if they didn't produce their quota for the day, he would maim them immediately. Wow. I mean, the maimings, who knows how bad and that's that, putting that's it nicely. Maimings. Yeah. But there was torture, rape, but there were definitely the maimings was a big thing. That the gentleman, I seen some of his other videos, and I, I actually, I agree with everything I seen him do in every email, uh, video I seen that, that, that guy mm-hmm. throw, that was in that video. Um, he would, they had the Belgian chocolates. I didn't know about that. Until mm-hmm. recently, but the mm-hmm. hands, the chocolate hands, mm-hmm. that's a slap to the face, no doubt. Wow. Um, Because who doesn't have descendants? Yeah. But it's, it's just like the gentleman was saying, though, like, it's all about the narratives and, like, how these stories are portrayed and how they're expressed. Like, it's no, it's no news or shock to anybody that Black people have been oppressed since... What the beginning of the time? So, like, I, I, I mean, will say that. I, I mean, I empathize with what he's saying. No, I mean, but like, but like the last couple hundred years, I would say. Oh, at the very question. least. So it's like, I'm not like shocked to hear that these stories aren't told because, like, let's be honest, like, black lives haven't been valued over time. Not all of them, at least. Not to the degree of others. And like like he said, there's no atrocity or atrocities that are like this one's worse than this. You know what I mean? Like all tragedy, all all these things are horrible. It's not like, you know, this one's worse than that. This is like, oh no. You know what I mean? Like we like, I don't know. I don't know how I'm trying when to it say comes it. to the Holocaust. It's just like, but when it comes to the Holocaust, they love throwing that in your face. No, that's what I'm saying. But they're but the second we they're controlling that narrative. That's my thing. Mm-hmm. It's like they're letting the world know this will never happen to our people again because they have the power and the influence to do it. Like when have we had that By, kind like of... Like shutting down a conversation. Yeah. There's only a certain level of the conversation you can even have mm-hmm. that before that conversation starts to become offensive sounding, mm-hmm. you could be already slapped with being either anti-Semitic it's, or something else. Exactly. And you'll, you'll get canceled. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm not going to get mad. Okay, in one hand... This is America, you should understand what the fuck you want to, right? But on the other hand, I can't be mad at a group of people who've actually stood up and have put in value and power behind their people. Yeah. Like you go attack some Jew in New York and you have the whole state, city and state, coming after you. Mm-hmm. you how many black people get assaulted in New York right now as we speak? Exactly. Every third yeah, they, they, they definitely, yeah. They, yeah, they, they definitely make yeah. a, they, they definitely make a big splash when anything yeah. happens. You know? here's, 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 and here's it, the it's, thing too. it's definitely on the news. Yeah. In New York, I don't know how it is in, other, in, in the other states, but I will say what I know in New York. In New York, the Jews have their own police. They have their own fire department. They have their own doctors and their own half of the hospital. Now, if we, granted, we have tried to do this, 
to do those very things. We've been labeled domestic terrorist, violent, uh -huh. and a threat to society whenever we've tried to do this. We've never tried to harm anyone. We've never tried to do anything. We uh -huh. have tried to better our people and basically have gotten fucked up for it. Yep. This, now, it's the narrative, man. This, right, who's... this thing with Leopold happened in the 1800s. Mm -hmm. You saw what he was doing to brothers and sisters then. Mm -hmm. That kind of shit is still going on today. Yeah. Rasheem Carter, 2023, state of Mississippi. That kind of shit is going on today. Do you know... <laughs> now, you saw what happened... You saw how the Jews succeeded after the Holocaust. You know how things went for them. Where are we after what Leopold has done to those people in the Congo who might be attached to us in some way, shape, or form? Where are we today? Do you know I had a Jewish person tell me that Jewish people have it harder than black people in the United States of America? Do you know how much it took for me to not light this motherfucker up? I mean, it's because of who this person knows that I didn't want to make somebody else uncomfortable that I didn't say anything. But that's one of those things, man. It's like that to us, that sounds ridiculous, but I don't like, know. Really? No, I, bro, really? trust me. I completely understand where you're coming from, but it's like, where do black people on welfare live? I don't know, man. That's not even one of those things that you could even like comment on. Cause it's like, that doesn't right, but even I can make tell sense. you where Jews on welfare live. I can tell you where Jews on welfare live in multi-million dollar homes. Yeah. How the fuck is that cool? Well, you know what I mean? Man, that's tough, man. But yet, if we try to stand up for ourselves in any way, shape or form, we're labeled as hateful. And all of a sudden we're a threat, you know, we're a threat. But yet everybody, it's not just the Jewish people either, but everybody else can stand up for their own people and do, and do what they need to do. But we can't, we're not allowed to. It's a thing a lot of people don't get that in the 1970s, the definition of beauty would have always been some really attractive white woman. Yeah. We had Ebony magazine, we had jet and, um, it wasn't until I think the 1940s, late 1940s, that Italians and um, Irish were starting to be considered a Caucasian uh, race. Because mm. prior to that in the United States, they were not considered white. Mm -hmm. Think about that. There's an exactly. inherent amount of texture for a long time, they came with looking white. Yeah. You see somebody and you're like, I oh, like this white dude. And they start speaking Spanish. You found out they're Cuban or Colombian mm -hmm. or Puerto Rican. Mm -hmm. Because there's so much range from being white like milk to being yeah. black as tar. Exactly. In some of these groups mm -hmm. that you look at them and you wouldn't know whether they were African or whether they were white, white until they mm -hmm. opened their mouth. Mm -hmm. So, People say Jewish and people uh, uh, immediately assume these curly beards and hair and not yarmulke. No, a lot of Jewish people aren't walking around with that no more than anybody else is walking around with their, 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 their garb. Oh. So, yeah, well, that's, that's oh. just, uh, that's just like a, a part of, of, of them. That, that's right. the Hasidic Jews. Right. Yeah. So right. how can you have it harder than a group of people who can't blend in to anything? Exactly. Because whether you're light-skinned or dark-skinned, you're still black. Uh -huh. Right. And, 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 and a lot of us were taught, you know, um, there's certain things that you, that you probably ain't got no business aspiring to. Like, I don't mm -hmm. know about you, Al, and even you, Gabe, you being actually slightly older than us, if you start, you know, you'd never see a black resident. I got my issues, pros and cons with Obama, but who the You and I, I both didn't think I'd see that either. I didn't think I see that in my no, lifetime. I didn't either. 
But that's sophisticated. I'm older, I'm older than both of you, than all you guys. I, I didn't, I didn't, I never knew that was gonna happen. Hey, you know, it wasn't believe, even a, a thought hey, in my I, head. But I believe they voted for his white side. I'm saying politics aside, though, it's still, a, it's still a pretty cool thing to see that, though, to see a person of color in that office, considering what this country is based on and what this country was founded on. It's, that's, yeah, that's a I cool mean, thing to see. Yeah, aesthetically. Aesthetically. Yeah. Politics yeah, aside. Other than yeah. that. Politics aside. Yeah. Aesthetically, other than that, yeah. I, 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 there's no value added to me. No. At all. Yeah. And None. it didn't change, I mean, it didn't change, like, the way we're treated in perceptions. Like, obviously things are better than they were 10 years ago or 20 years ago or 50 years ago. But it's... I'd like to think that. I mean, I really would like to think that. But per, percep, but perception wise, it, it 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 probably looks that way, but it's it's probably definitely not. No, I mean we're being pointed towards like necessarily possibly being thrown in concentration camps as we speak. Yeah, I think our government is after us. I think it's like I I find it very hard whether people talk about it or not. I understand it. I find it very hard for there be any group of intelligent type of person, and I'm not saying people are dumb, to not look at what's going on in any media, let alone multiple medias, and not think, at the very least think, that there might be possible that our government is setting us up to be taken over. Be dude, I would invaded. not be surprised. Yeah, I I'm would not saying, be surprised. I think it's a compelling thing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like the whole Red Dawn thing, but let alone your government is literally, you ain't got to knock the door down because you don't want to keep other people out. We just unlock the door for you. Mm. That's mm-hmm. our government. And guess what? If you have us fighting against each other, there is no country. And I, I get this. I get this with people out here because remember where I live. So I get this with people out here. They seem to think that racism is just a thing that affects some people. It's not some you know, systematic racism or institutional racism or Nixon's, you know, um, push for commercializing, commercializing um, the penal mm-hmm. system and jail systems and having them make sure you fill them up with, with yeah. blacks and Hispanics. Yep. And poor, poor white, because a poor white will still sit back there and go, well, I'm, I'm still white. Mm-hmm. Not say those words, but they'll look at the person that has that money and that power. And since they identify with how that person looks, they think that they're the same. Whereas that person don't look at you no different than they look at a poor Chinese, Hispanic, or black. Mm-hmm. We're all just pogs, you know, colors in the, you know, pogs in the freaking machine. Mm-hmm. And in a in a in 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 white supremacy, the purest form of white supremacy probably has very little to do with being white at this point. These powerful people are so powerful that because you have two or three hundred or eighty billion dollars, what's eighty billion dollars to a person that has real power? That has a power that runs countries. Mm-hmm. If your next door neighbor could be a sociopath or a psychopath, then why can't a multi-trillionaire? We don't know anybody living, right? You know, there's people who have power over other people. You think these people can't be psychopaths or sociopaths? You think a thousand people or a million people or a billion people, lives matter? So if we have the two people in this country who has the most intertwined relationship, it's going to be blacks and whites fighting with each other all the mm-hmm. time. Because sure enough, there is nothing you've done that has a thing to do with slavery, because I'm all going to default back to that, or pig law, or Jim Crow, or segregation, or what's going on right now. You may have nothing to do with that system. Mm. You still benefit from it. That's one. Two, if you get defensible with something you had nothing to do with, how are you still not part of the problem? Think about what I said. Yeah, no, that's a fact. Now, I ain't saying it's all white people. No. But there's way too many white people who get defensive about something. You're right. You ain't got nothing to do with it. Or even, what's them call it, where they just dismiss it. They just want to dismiss the conversation because it's a tough conversation to have. That, right. That's a part of it. You're a part of the problem at that point. Because that's like, well, but think about like, these are the things thing. that we need to talk about and we need to get past so we can move forward. And we can't think get how, past you know, it. Think of, think of how many people died in the Congo. Think of how many people are continuing to die today. And we get told to get over it. To get over it. Yeah. Diamonds are a stone. In truth, is the hardest substance known to man right now, other than one or two 
man-made items that, you know, one's probably still declassified, the other one I, I can't remember the name of, either which way. There's probably a couple of things out there, but naturally, there's nothing harder than a diamond. Mm. So it has some applications. Other than that, it's shiny. Yeah. Yeah. But every chick's walk around going, I want a diamond. Mm -hmm. And I ain't mad at them, but we put value on what we put value exactly. on, right? So a diamond has value because we put value mm -hmm. on it. And because yep. of that, more people are dying now in Africa because of diamonds, more so than rubber now, because of diamonds that people are sitting around wearing on their, their bodies. You know, all these rappers putting $50 million in their mm -hmm. teeth. You name it. We put value on rocks, but we haven't put value on human life. And like Al said earlier, we have, we have, very, we have so little human. You have got to dehumanize someone in order to commit such atrocity. Yeah. Yep. But see, we can't process, and we can't process that kind of stuff, man. Our brains don't, aren't wired that way. Think to that degree of like genocide is essentially what that is or mm. attempted genocide as far as Hitler's too. Like, I don't know, man, I think about these kind of things. It's like, I can't wrap my head around it because at no point in my life have I ever wanted to do harm to any set of people or any group of people for any reason ever. Like life got so many damn yep. obstacles and problems. Like I do not need that on top of it, you know? And my brain isn't wired to like think Dude. like that. I can't look at somebody because of the color of skin and be like, you know what? I hate you. I have never, like Mike, you know, we weren't raised like that. I don't know what, like I've felt racism and I've felt it coming at me and I've never understood it. I'm like, I don't, I can't wrap my head around that kind of stuff. So. Because fear is an incredible thing, man. A, a, it's a motivator. It's a divider. Mm -hmm. Fear brings mm -hmm. people together yeah. as much as it tears people apart. Mm -hmm. If you can get away with something on a societal level, if you can get away with mm -hmm. something, because there is no fear of uh, uh, what's the word for uh, consequences yeah. or repercussions or consequences, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Then that expands your ability to do horrible Jeez. things. Now, and these people that want to say, "Well, you know, black people selling black people." Yeah, 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 there's a bunch of black people up on the beaches and they were selling black, selling their own slaves to the colonists and the colonists and, you know, out of a handful of black, blacks, tribal people who did mm -hmm. this. I think that argument in some people's mind thinks that that just makes it okay. Yeah. That even after the first set of freaking slaves were sold into the country, you know, 13 colonies and by such. By Jews and Arabs. Yeah, but I buy everybody, right? Um, and even this one dude was like, well, the first, first, uh, slave owner in America was a black person. And there is no argument. There's nothing you can say, whether it's true or not, that quantifies it being okay thereafter. Exactly. How many children were born in slavery after generations? They were had breeding farms, mm -hmm. just like we threw breed dogs. Yep. And you go out there and you kill a dog and film that. Have two or three people with their cell phones. You have the whole damn Dude, nation. They used to, do you know the idea of a picnic? Do you know what a picnic was? Yeah, pick a nigga. Yeah. But Mike, what? But Mike, it's like you said, man. Like, it's all about the values that we set. And like, throughout history or throughout recent history, like, our lives just haven't been valued like that. Our lives have never been valued like that. And it's... Not, it's been, not collectively. It's disheartening, man. It's really disheartening to be honest. Man. Uh, it doesn't it doesn't help that 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 uh we're we're separate uh, on 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 that plane too, like uh, against yeah. each other. You know yep. what I'm saying? I mean, you guys talked about that in other episodes. Yeah. Until we don't until we don't come together, things are mm. not going to change, bro. Things are never nope. going to change, bro. No. That's not me and saying to something. To what you to said, me. and to go to what you said, Mark, is about you. We, no value or what have you to segue to that we'll uh watch another clip oh. and this is recent this is here in new york on the train this is 30 year old jordan neely and earlier this week, while riding the New York subway system, Jordan Neely was choked to death. 
by this 24-year-old Marine veteran. His name hasn't been released. Why? Because he has not been arrested in connection with the death of Jordan Neely. The video I'm about to show you is graphic. You have been warned. Oh uh, yeah, I'm glad he gave the warning. Look at this, look at this. You got the white boy choking him out. I don't know what these other two clowns are doing, but their names haven't been disclosed either. But you see him. I don't know what they're trying to do, but the guy's choking him out. So the other two guys, I don't really understand what they're doing in the what picture. What is he choking him for? Or if they're trying... Uh, Jordan, uh, he got onto the train. He was asking for money in an aggressive tone. The second his tone got aggressive, the white boy snuck up behind him and just choked him out. Now he has more room oh, than joke. Yeah. Which means... In spite of the fact that the medical examiner has ruled Jordan Neely's death a homicide, the 24-year-old Marine veteran that choked Jordan Neely out for over three minutes until he could not be revived by EMTs has not been charged with any crime. He was taken into custody for questioning and released. Jordan Neely was a young homeless man that was struggling with mental illness after the death of his mother by his stepfather in 2007. He liked to be on the subway and his gig was he performed as Jesus. Michael Jackson. Passerby said that even though he was aggressive in his speech, that they did not perceive him as a threat. Because he rode the train every day. Jordan Neely was 30 years old and he was choked out of the subway system. And a video what? exists reminiscent of watching George Floyd's life be choked out of him. And what? no one has been arrested for this homicide. Let's get it. Now, the uh, white boy that was choking him out, I don't know his name, but I do know this. His father is a retired police chief for the NYPD. So that should tell you there, right there. What I'm saying is like, what, what, what was the conflict though? That's what I'm confused about. Like, why is he choking him? Why are there people filming it and nobody's like in action to stop this from happening? Well, because in this day we, and age, that's, that's we the do way not it is. Matter. Do not matter. We don't matter. But I'm saying there was another. We have never met. There was another black dude there. What the? Here's what the was thing. he doing? The couple of things I heard was that the dude was on the subway, more often than not, doing a Michael Jackson thing. Uh -huh. You know, um, uh, trying to get you know donations. He was, like, he was homeless, and and they did say he was struggling with mental illness and that kind of stuff, right? Oh, yes. So I guess his this stepfather day, killed his mom. Right. On this particular day, he was um. Saying stuff like, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hurt somebody. I'm gonna hurt myself. I don't care what happens. I'll go to jail. I don't care what happens. I don't care what happens to me, blah, blah, blah. So if you thought he was a threat, because other people said that he might not, they didn't feel like he was a threat. Mm -hmm. But at the very least, we know three people did. The one dude that was choking, mm -hmm. the Marine, mm -hmm. and the other two that was going through his pockets, maybe checking for weapons, I like to assume. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing. Real neck could choke. Seconds. Yeah. Applied right, he's not. Yeah. Yeah. You let him Easy. go. Yeah. That's why. Uh -huh. That's why if you watch any MMA, what do they do? They come over there, check the out in the way they uh -huh. do. They get you off of them. Yeah. Mm hmm Because all he did was cut off oxygen to his brain. For three minutes. So if you three minutes. So even if you thought he was a threat, the minute that that threat was neutralized, why is what isn't it stopped? Exactly. You don't well, get and you, and you can tell the the guy the guy probably went limp on him once he got once he went limp then then you know he's out you didn't have to he didn't have to do that no well, you can't th th there's there's no excuses for people man no you got a person who will rape children and get five years right well, there was <laughs> this thing that when Jared first came out and they found out that he was a pedophile mm -hmm. right Jared <laughs> they um. In that same month, I think it was in Florida, they had like these people, there were like these eight administrators or something like that. 
that was stealing and something like that. And they got like 20 years for stealing um, funds from, from, ch from children, basically. And mm -hmm. Jerry got like, I don't know, five or eight for raping them. And, and I don't one know black if you ever heard. Mm -hmm. Oh, the one black, uh, I don't know if you heard, the one black kid who uh, was committing a robbery with his buddies. The cops show oh, yeah. up. They shoot the boy, his buddy down. His buddy got shot. His buddy got shot. This no. kid had no gun on him, no nothing. No. I mean, they pinned the murder. He, 30 years. He got yeah. 30 years. And with the new evidence, the judge still said, I'm not changing it. Yeah. 30 fucking years. So if we know about it, there's not some committee that sits there and goes, oh, this ain't going to happen under your administration, whoever that administration may be. <laughs> Why doesn't someone step in and go, oh, no. Like that black chick that finally got her freedom when, when all the slaves stood up and found out about what was going on with her and it was like, oh, hell no. And they brought it to light about she was being sex trafficked. Real pretty ass light-skinned girl. She was being sex trafficked. Then she turned around and killed her freaking abductor and all that mm, shit. Yeah. And they gave her a fucking... Yeah. Yeah. And they locked her I know up. what you're yes. talking about. Yes. Yeah. She served 16 of those. Wow. Wait, they charged the they charged the girl. The, she, the they charged the she victim. killed the dude that was her captor, though. Well, that was like trafficking her. Yeah, she killed him, and she got locked up. She killed yeah. her, so she protecting herself. She mm -hmm. killed him, and she got locked up. But they gave her. She got locked yeah. up. Hey, I'm gonna say something. And essentially, quick. and essentially, yeah. saved a whole bunch of girls too by doing yeah. that. Oh yeah, yeah. Let me say something real quick. That's I've no crazy. With nobody. Bro. I have no problem with anybody. I really don't. And I and I definitely don't have a problem with white people. But I will say this. Wrong is wrong. That's all it's true. Some things we should be able to agree upon. We obviously can't because we can't, we can't agree on whether or not a veteran who, whether they go to combat or not, can go and be trained or go and kill people for our country. But if they're not 21, can't drink in this country. Mm -hmm. Just like a five-year-old can decide to have sex with older people or have reassignment, you know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, surgery. So since we can't understand something, I want to say this right now real quick. I have no problem with white people. And if something happened to a white person, and it's horrible, obviously, it's horrible. We're not talking about individual cases necessarily. We may specify um, individual cases because of how frequent they happen, mm -hmm. but we're talking collectively what's happened to black exactly. people or black and brown mm -hmm. people. So you can say you can say a thousand instances where some white dude raped some white girl or a white woman or an old woman or, you know, killed. Of course, and wrong is wrong. But at the end of the day, there's still a power structure that favors you even though you have gone through something horrible. And we mm -hmm. have built this country. Every fucking war, we fought in it and got shit on coming back from home mm -hmm. up until recent years. Vietnam being horrible, we all know the stories being spit on, baby mm -hmm. killer. What happened to black dudes that came back to Vietnam? You know what they had to look forward to? Heroin. Yep. Yeah. Not just alcoholism and eventually finding your way. You got to think, hey, you three, when we were coming up little kids, the Vietnam vets were younger than Marcus is now. Yep. But they were growing mm -hmm. men. But we were coming up little kids. Yeah. Think about that. I Relatively, remember, it's not that long. The stuff though. that they had to do no. out there, like these motherfuckers, didn't want to do that shit. But they were defending this country. That shit, like any normal human being, would process that in a fucked up way. Though, if you think about what you had to go over there and do, then you come home and you're treated like shit on top of it. It's like, I don't know, man. But it's different. We look back on that, right? And we have this. Oh my goodness. A lot of these people didn't know no different. Yeah. Think about that. You only know what you know. Yeah. I ain't saying that people didn't have hope or had some idea of what it could look oh. like with actual equality and freedom. Because we we have never been other than, you know, maybe a time. No, that's not even the case even with you, Al. Because your situation is different when you was when you was there before you came here. But um because who your family was. But um we have not been a, a part of those groups of completely disenfranchised people. We've had to deal with some racist encounters and some 
and kind of say, we know we have to get it. We we're going to live through. Mm-hmm. I get it. But, you know, I've never walked into a situation where people thought I was a thug. You know, I don't hold around knocking thugs. I'm not judging. I'm just saying. My pants didn't pull me from behind. I'm, I'm not slaying for all the time. If I'm not super angry. I don't give off those type of vibes, mm-hmm. but yet still most people are intimidated to me. Yeah. Like out here, I'm not as big as I used to be. I'm at 200 pounds right now. You know, I'm not in bad shape, you know, by any means. I'm in good shape, but I'm not fat and all that shit, but I'm 200 pounds. You know, I'm 5'8", 200 pounds. And people, you, you, and, I, like you and I never had to be, you and I never had to be big to be intimidating to anybody. No, 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 Marcus no, by no you, means. Because Marcus will tell you by firsthand. No Jacksonville Jaguar game against the New York Giants. I shut down and punked an entire section of grown men. Reduced them from gum flapping to politely clapping. Okay? As Marcus, I tell you, like him, him and uh, this other dude that was with us, I won't mention his I just name. Like Ryan. I, was, I would lap at you. I, was, I just like <laughs> way of Ryan. Awesome. <laughs> Somebody should write that shit down. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> wow. <laughs> the arrogance, the arrogance never ceases to <clears throat> amaze me, man. Never to but now, uh, it's just seeing this. Now, I still don't think anything's happened to this Marine. I don't think he's in jail. I don't think he's, uh, anything's no, I happened. Anything. I know these two clips were a little heavy. But dude, you saw the one he did on um on um not it was not transgenderism, but pronouns, all that kind of stuff. The same guy that was being interviewed. You see that one? He's like, yes, America's yes. Got, America doesn't want to throw sanctions on us if we don't adhere to these pronouns and all this other stuff and, and homosexuality. And yeah, I'm like, I had no issue with nothing he said, dude. No real American should, because if if, if America doesn't, okay. It's like there's certain divides, right, in this pod. You got people sitting there going, hey, inclusiveness, you need to, like, hear what I'm saying, and, and you need to respect how I feel. No problem with you right there. But then it goes, oh, no, 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 no. I don't have to respect how mm-hmm. you feel, and I got to hear nothing mm-hmm. you say. Because, yeah, I need to call you he, she, him, it, all that stuff. But you can't address me as a man. I'm a cis man. I'm not a cis man. I'm mm-hmm. a man. What's interesting is... You want me to respect all those hundred genders, however yeah, ludicrous some of them are, but you have zero respect for my right to identify myself in any way I see fit. So in other words, it's one no. rule for you. You say everyone's entitled to say they can be whatever they want. But the moment I decide that I want no, to be a Piers. two-spirit penguin, you go absolutely nuts and no, want to control that's not how, it how works, I Piers. self-identify. That's not that how is it works. the point I'm making. So if you want to, like, the minute you come out your mouth with one to rebuttal how I want myself to be called, then we can go back to the truth. Since we didn't want to yes. problem. The, mm-hmm. the truth is, there's only That's two. It. In the rarest, rarest, rarest of hermaphrodelia, how you say that word, where you actually born with both sex organs. Mm-hmm. And one doesn't really, one doesn't really function or work. And the, yeah, yeah, that's gonna say right. It, 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 exactly. The parents usually make a, a messed up decision when you're mm-hmm. when you're an infant. <laughs> there are two. That's it, men and women. That's it. Now, whatever mm-hmm. you else want to do, I got no issue. As long as you ain't competing against women. As long as Thank you walk in the bathroom. Well, that's just doesn't that like, make yeah. sense at all. Beard and all. That's a weird problem. That's that's a slippery slope, man. That that gender. Yeah, that's, that's a slippery, slippery, slippery slope. slope because it because is anybody, to me. No, say anybody can say, "Well, I identify as this," and then how does that work though? Like, if you come out and say you yo, identify as a woman, is that do you get yo, treated? You Bryce know what I mean? Said, like, I don't understand it. Bryce said a couple of hours ago. I swear, Bryce said a couple of hours ago. Because I didn't just identify as things. Getting out, it's gotten out of hand. But where is it going to end? She goes, because I identify as um, Elon Musk's uh, daughter, and he owes me back pay. I mean, she's, I mean, she's yeah. she's <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah why, genetic, why, right? why not? Mm. Why right, not? Because if you do a blood test, she's not related to Elon Musk, but does that matter? Right. No. Because if you want to talk science and genetics, apparently there's multiple genders. Yes. Yeah, every, everything's interchangeable. It's all about how you yeah, we've all known. It's all about how you feel. Yep. If I identify as this. Yeah, everything's interchangeable. Is it 100? 
That's crazy. Apparently, there's a hundred yeah. genders. A hundred. What genders. does that mean, though? Like, what does that even mean? God knows. I don't even fucking know, bro. The, the generation has gone to the toilet, like, bro. I, That's I, it. I can't even like. There's, I can't there's... even have that conversation with somebody if they're going to tell me there's over a hundred genders. Like, I can't. I can't have that conversation because that makes no sense. Like, how about this one? Because this one makes sense. You can feel how you want to yes. about yourself. But the minute you start expecting other people to feel that's that way problem. and address you mm-hmm. accordingly and be offended if they didn't know to address mm-hmm. you that point, exactly. bit, then that's where you're at with Exactly. Me. That's where the mm-hmm. issue lies. It's supposed to be America. How the hell am I supposed, supposed to be America? Like, you'd be like, I identify as this. Well, like, damn, how the hell is that well, supposed to know that? Well, now, 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 now you're intruding on my civil liberties. You know what I'm saying? How about like, you throw yourself on my who, face? Right, exactly. Yeah. Who, who the hell are you to tell me how how, <laughs> was like, how I'm supposed like, to act? Like, like, how I'm supposed to feel? You. Get the fuck you out of here. You can feel and identify however you feel, but you don't have the right you want. to like dictate how others perceive that. You right. don't have that right yeah. mm-hmm. because that takes away from other people's rights. And like, that's right. you're imposing yeah, your will on them. Slope. That's it's exactly it's, what it is. If anybody can identify as anything, then hey, man, I don't know where, like you said, where does it end? I'm a like, tree. I won't I won't go into it the way I did, but like on the first clip where I told you where, you know, Marcus and Micah had to uh veto some shit I said. It was literally over a comment that a transgender made. The comment was a natural woman doesn't exist. How the fuck are you going to say some shit like that's that? That's what I mean. That's why I don't even now, like. That's all I'm going to say because I don't want to. I don't want what to ha- You know, I don't want. That's why I don't even get into those. Before to happen again. So how, how is that that's a true I'm, statement? I don't even get into those exactly. conversations. That don't make sense. So it's like and then, me talking crazy. I don't. I don't have time to even have that crazy conversation. A natural woman and then doesn't they found exist. An how? Exactly. How's that? And then they found. An Aretha Franklin song, Offensive? Well, I'm Every Woman, right? I thought that was an uplifting oh. song. I thought that she was Bro, ev- talking everything, about everything the now is... Womanhood. God, everything I'm now is bothering you know, everybody. Look, 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 what, too, look what they did to we're the... We're all four men here, so we don't know what like a woman would feel, but I can understand if natural women... I'm like a man and a half during the summer. <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, I can understand how a, a natural woman would feel some kind of way about this whole gender identity thing, because there's hey, things Mark, that women can do you real quick. that. Because what you're saying, oh. think about this. I'm a feminist in my heart, a real feminist, not this modern day age thing where it's not about equality, it's about superiority, and you shouldn't even exist anyway because you're a man. Exactly. I ain't talking about that nonsense. I'm not talking about that goal. I'm talking about women being capable of doing most things men can. And men, most things women can. We can't have cool. babies. So they're not as strong as us. I don't care what people think. I don't care how many CrossFit women you see, bodybuilding chicks you see. I don't care MMA. I don't care about none of that because these are outliers. Mm-hmm. Irregardless, if there's a million of these women that can do that, out of almost five billion women, mm-hmm. a million is a drop in a bucket. That's why it's called outliers. Yeah. There is not but a handful of women, I think, on the planet that could take a straight up punch from me in the face. I don't care how big they are, how strong they are, who they fought. I don't think there's that many women in the world that could take a punch from me. As hard as I'm hitting. There's a lot of guys that can't take a punch from you, bro. No, you know what I'm saying? It's like, so that being said, this modern day feminism, you have women supporting them, not realizing that to what Marcus is trying to say or saying is that all you're doing now is supporting men. Uh-huh. Like you think these women should be swimming and fighting and all kind of stuff that are biological men that <laughs> if you didn't catch them after Ooh. puberty, I mean, before puberty, which is horrible in itself, you got them after puberty, <laughs> they've had four or five years or 10 years or whatever it is of testosterone mm-hmm. Infusing natural. in their bone. Yeah, natural testosterone. And their density in their mm-hmm. muscle. Exactly. There is no competition. Mm. There is nothing remotely equal in these situations mm. or no, no level. But now you're sitting there going, no, trans women are women. They're real women. It's like, all you're saying now is that men are, are better at being a woman than you are. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Think about and that. Don't get me wrong. But anyway. hey, don't get me wrong. I'm cool with people doing whatever they feel like they want to do. However you want to live your life and wherever you as long as you don't hurt yeah. children, women, exactly. Have, I mean, as long you, as you hurt that children, children. As long as you don't hurt children. Exactly. But like, how do you identify as cool? But once it gets to that, that's problematic, man. Like when it gets to that kind of stuff, where it comes to like athletics and like mixed martial arts, like come on, man. From what I understand, they're teaching that in school too. Like how 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 are they getting away with that? Because dude, man, dude, man. like for <laughs> real, like you ain't lying. They got Never. books. They Do got you know, books. Like oh, men could be girls and girls can be boys. I mean, and girls can be boys. I mean, how 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 are they teaching that at school? Dude, in California and yeah. Washington, yeah, in California and Washington, they can take your kid away from you. Yeah, if you deny them, if you deny them gender reassignment yeah they can take your kid away from me that's that's, that's evil man we're I waiting can't, I, I can't right. wrap that's my head around evil. that it's a just these people are so intelligent it's like saying it's like okay it's not like okay it's not, okay i gotta be careful while i say this their, their brains are not even de- developed yet. I mean, exactly. I don't understand how, exactly. how that's, 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 how that's allowed. That's, that's that's there's border, an agenda behind that's it. That's borderline question, evil. Man. There's an agenda behind it. That's borderline that's evil. That, that's, come on, man. It's beyond evil. It's, 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 it's so blatant in your face. And, and, and I think these, these, these pieces of crap are so intelligent that if there's like 10 outcomes, eight to nine of them fit their purpose. Uh-huh. The one... We have countermeasures for that one in case that uh-huh. one happens. That one, you know, snap. Mm-hmm. And that one, we have countermeasures for that one. But every other 14 million, it's all on ours. Because if you go out, I ain't saying I advocate violence by any means. Alan knows what I'm going with this. But you start <laughs> taking the wrong person's child. And exactly. they open up fire and kill a bunch of people. I ain't saying that's right. I'm saying we're learning towards something. Then they're going to start pushing this gun control agenda again. And it's these people who sit there who don't even know they're part of the problem. Because I don't think it's all just evil people doing evil shit. I think it's some of it's good people not knowing that they're being conditioned, yeah. manipulated, and manipulated to uh-huh. do evil things. Because mm-hmm. the Second Amendment is there for a purpose. It ain't for us to be shooting curry dogs or drinking beer and shooting out. <laughs> no. It ain't for us to just have personal... Yeah, all these are side things. It's to... Be able to form a militia uh-huh. to fight and combat your government if it becomes tyranny. Now I'm not paraphrasing, paraphrasing the wrong way, but that's, that's the, basically that's the, that's just the it, Second yeah. Amendment. Uh-huh. That's just right. So these people say, "Well, you you don't need guns to have a militia." No. Like, oh, no, really? Decided, well, no, this is going to have that. So right, because the no, cops that's, that's, will follow that's the That's a very definition of of having a militia. Is. You need you need you need guns. Yeah. You need yeah. you need weapons. How you going to get yourself? Right, exactly. I feel horrible. Every child that dies because of this fake thing happening that I think is a part of the agenda also, not one of them makes me go, yeah, I should turn my guns in. Uh-oh. Yeah, I don't think I should get any more. I think we all should turn our weapons in now. I think, you know what? We're America, but you know what? We're going to be, no, you know what? No. They should go. They all should go. None of us should have these. I honestly believe we should have automatic weapons. We've been conditioned to thinking that the only military is supposed to have that, military grade. I think we should have damn tanks sitting in the backyard. I think there should be a couple <laughs> tanks per, per community in the you think I'm playing. Because how are you going to fight your government with, with nines, with Glocks? With what? Think about it. Yeah, when, when they come real. at you with tanks, tanks and, no, and, no, and, and blades and shit. Oh, my God. You know, uh, you know what? You're right. We, we give and take. We, you know what? We shouldn't have automatic weapons. How many people can modify a, a freaking semi-auto anyway? But anyway, anyway. We shouldn't have automatic weapons because that's just overkill. Overkill to what? To the unit that's sent to your town or your city who follows some evil order. And you're going to be doing what with Blackhawks and all the new stuff that we have now. Drones and all this other stuff. What are you going to do with a whole freaking regiment, a freaking army come in and they send the Marines Mm -hmm. right before that? You're dead. I don't care how many people you think you have that has guns. There's more guns. This man, there's more guns are hitting people. There's more exactly. guns are hitting people in big cities have. Without question. Oh. We can't do nothing against our military. 
No. But we have all these stupid conversations. Should a person be able to have an abortion nine months in or two weeks after the baby's been born? Should children be able to make a decision to have sex with older people or be medically castrated? Should pedophiles be okay? Help me. I mean, we're having conversations that do nothing but waste the taxpayer dollars. Dude, all we do is waste money. And people are getting mad <laughs> about reparations. We throw money away. We throw billions of dollars away on nothing. On nothing. And every single marginalized group in this country, I say this to people all the time, they get mad, I don't care. Every marginalized group in this country has got reparations except us. And that's including the slave owner who got reparations for losing their property. This is historical fact. But the Jews got reparations too. Yeah, they did. Everybody did. Everybody did. And in my opinion, like we wouldn't even need reparations. Just give us our shit back. From music to every single motherfucking invention that we have invented. And we wouldn't need reparations. And that's, and that's everything that makes them money. From the internet to, I mean, et cetera, et cetera. We won't go into that. Just give us our shit back and we'll be all right. But that'll never fucking happen, bro. Never. Bro, they don't, they wouldn't even take the money that could be allotted for reparations to actually create some funded program that was funded by the gov by the federal government, but it had the federal government had no control over it, that could look into true healing of racism and the generational systematic and systemic systems that are in place to hold certain people down to keep there's no purpose to that because that defeats the whole purpose of what they're doing you feel me people get mad about mm -hmm. crt because they don't realize that there's there's two or three ways of looking at it good and bad and they're focusing on the two strongest good and bad ways of looking at it. we don't know our history we've been lied to that's the only thing we see i get that this in there going well you're going to teach black people that they are oppressed or you're going to have young white people, young children, white children thinking that they should feel guilt for what happened years before, 50 years, 60, 80, 200 years before they were born. They're looking at these <laughs> two possible things, not realizing that we've taught this shit now anyway. If you're taking one college course, you've been evolved, involved in CRT. Eight, nine, I'd say ninth, 10th, 10th, 11th grade, you've been involved in the CRT on some level. Critical race theory. We've all been subjected to it in this country. But because we're sitting there looking at aspects of history, particularly black history, particularly Chinese history, being thrown into the fucking ground that they're building the railroad tracks on, people not getting burials, people not getting even, you know what? They might charge your family for the time it took to stop work and throw their ass into the damn mortars of building something. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't even give them no compensation for you dying, indentured servitism, you name it. Actual CRT has been taught on some level throughout the whole United States. But people getting focused on, oh, now you're going to teach white people to hate themselves. No, white people shouldn't hate themselves. You should hate that there is a possible structured process in our beautiful country who hurt other people. And by you acting like it doesn't exist doesn't mean it doesn't exist. There are some ignorant ass black people who sit there and think all white people are racist or bigots. There are people who don't understand the difference between racism and bigotry, that we all mm -hmm. can be bigots, but you have to have power to be a racist. We don't get these things. Yep. And we have no value. Just the people who spit and talk about this stuff, they'll shoot you down in a heartbeat. Don't yes, name something stupid and everyone is like, you know, like a rabbit, like, like the, the dog and a rabbit. All you gotta do is like have a bunch of dogs sitting there and then just put one rabbit. And they all gonna just chasing it. Not realizing <laughs> what the hell? We were having a real <laughs> we were getting some, what what uh, oh ooh, rabbit. Or the P word. Yeah, well that's true. <laughs> well drugs That's true. Because drugs were thrown in our communities. Nope. Crack pandemic, the heroin before that one, nope. That's it, man. 
Yeah, man. Every person Couldn't was slaughtered more. after slavery. Yeah. Thinking that you could vote. The shit that they did to people who just talked about voting. To make an example. Look up the, ma- look up the massacre of Okoe. Okoe, Florida. But hey, folks. We want to thank our brothers Michael and Gabe for joining us this evening. Oh, all right. Oh yes, it is time. And if you guys are looking for any artwork, man, please hit my nephew up, Nathaniel, at Levity Creations. Oh yeah, and um, check out this music uh, <laughs> producer of our <laughs> intro and outro track, Trap Sex. We'll find his music yes, on SoundCloud and YouTube. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thanks again, folks. Please like, subscribe. I'm sorry I'm laughing, man, but that hesitation kills me, Mark. That's like the second time, dude. (laughs) No, it's waiting too late. Take it easy, folks. Thanks for joining us.